that we are going to value is determined. So, um, as far as a business valuation is concerned, it is uh, more or less same with other uh, valuation. So we we have a few approaches to be used or that we can choose from uh, in uh, carrying out business valuation. So uh, can you see guys? Uh, oh, can you see the the slide? Or oh, I didn't share yet. We can see. I cannot see. So why don't you you tell me? Because I didn't share yet the slide. We thought you were giving introduction first. <laughs> Good answer, Lavia. Uh, okay, let me share you the slide. Okay, so we go for for the first slide from the first slide. So this is the the topic that we are going to do today, uh, the continuation of fundamentals of business relation and then the business evaluation process. So this is uh, basically the topic to cover. So this is what I just uh, said just now. So in uh, valuing uh, the, the business, uh, we can uh, choose uh, any of these approaches, but uh, same with the real estate valuation, the the, the 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 approaches that we are going to use it is depends uh, whether it is uh, suitable to be used uh, for that particular uh, firm or company or not. But uh, as far as uh, business valuation is concerned, we have a, a, a variety of uh, approaches that we can choose from uh, in uh, carrying out our duty to value a business uh, for any purposes that uh, the client want us to value their company. So uh, as you all are aware in the tutorial questions, uh, some of the questions I have asked you to uh, list the purpose of uh, business valuation, right? Is it correct? Yes. yes no sleeping uh, okay so the, the the first approach that we can use is market approach so as it is stated in the slide normally market approach is suitable to be used when we are valuing a business for a merger and acquisition uh, purposes And then the other uh, 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 purposes which is suitable to be used is a guideline publicly traded company. Uh, so uh, the, for the income approach, uh, normally we will use uh, discounted cash flow income method and for asset approaches. Uh, what is the other names of asset approaches? Or, or what is the other name of asset approach? Any Anybody has any idea? Asset approach, aka normally asset approach is also known as cost method, right? Cost approach, right? right. Is it correct or not? Correct. Correct. Macam tak confident je siapa tu Ikuan? <laughs> Ikuan, kita kena ada confident dalam diri, dalam diri Ikuan. Especially a, a guy, you 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 should have a, a, a confident. Tak ada confidence susah nanti. Okay, uh, what is involved, as I mentioned yeah, uh, a few days ago, don't worry uh, too much about these approaches because today we are not going to go uh, very details uh, in these approaches. So this is an introduction to the approaches that we can use or choose uh, to value the business. Uh, in the coming weeks, we will uh, go through each of these approach uh, in a quite a detail. So uh, this is just to introduce to you guys, in order for us to value a business, this is the approaches that we can use, we can choose from. 
So what is involved in a business valuation? So normally this is the steps or the procedure or the uh, the sequence of uh, a process that you need to uh, uh, follow or you need to use in valuing a business. So first and foremost, you have to have uh, information on the background or history of the company or, or, or the business. So in order for you guys to value the company, you need to know the history, the background of the company or, or, or the business. What type of business that the company uh, venture in? Who are the... Uh, uh, what is the, 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 the nature of the business? So the next uh, stage or process, you need to uh, have a look at the economic outlook. So you need to, to have uh, information uh, on the economic outlook of the industry, of the company, of the uh, business. So the next step is you need to find information about who are the companies, the industry's competitors. So the competition in the industry. And if you are still remember when you do your economics principle a uh, few years back, point, uh, there is a topic about uh, individual uh, companies and about the market, right? Uh, so uh, same with the uh, business valuation process, you need to know uh, uh, details of the individual company that you are going to value and then at the same uh, time... Sir, need, yeah. Sorry right? to disturb, uh, because Afik and Tianwan is not been admitted yet. We'll ask them to come late. <laughs> Next time, don't worry about them. Just ignore them. They should be, they should uh, manage their time, their, their time accordingly. I know that you are the class rep, but you you shouldn't uh, uh, apa ni lah, let them uh, learn a lesson. Padam muka dia Afiq. Afiq ni saya nak tembak dia. Jangan bagi dia itu sangat manja sangat. Uh, industry competition, you need to 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 find information about the industry competition. Who are our competitors? Who are the the uh, subject company competitors? Uh, what are the position of your subject company in the industry? When when you are doing your real estate valuation or property valuation, you call it subject property, right? So when you are doing a business valuation, you can call it a subject company meaning that the company that you're going to value so you need to to have a, some sort of a comparison data on the industry so uh, it is crucial for us to know what is the position of the company that we are going to value in the whole industry so how does the comp competition uh, looks like within their uh, industry their, their, their same type of business so far, okay. Do you have any 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 question to ask? Because normally when I share this slide uh, with you, I I couldn't see the your meet on your page, ni. So that's why if somebody uh, request requesting to join the session, I wouldn't know. Unless I, I have to stop sharing the, the, the slide. So the next uh, uh, stage or information that you need to find out or you need to get for the uh, business relation process is nature of the business. You need to know every single details, every single thing about the company. So who are the management of the company? Who are the board of directors? Who are the CEOs? Who are the general manager? Who are the finance manager? So you need to know every single aspect of the company in details. So it is listed under nature of the business. So you need to know the guys, the person who are responsible in managing the company. What does this person has to do with a business relation? Is there any impact? on their 
uh, the is there any impact of the management profile to the company's value? Maybe yes, maybe no. Right. So that's why we need to know who are the persons or people who manage the company. Because if you, if you look at the, 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 the nature of the business, especially in Malaysia, sometimes they uh, they like to put some uh, public figure, some uh, ex-minister or, or, or ex-important uh, person, uh, either politician or somebody who has uh, a, a held a high post in the, in, uh, in the public services. Uh, to join the company because sometimes they they want uh, their company to look good with the uh, uh, the appearance of these uh, people or person. Sometimes they they don't they don't do anything in the company. They just uh, their function is just as a, 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 a non executive uh, members of directors or something like that. But then some some company they need uh, this uh, type of person. To give uh, their company uh, a good uh, appearance to the public, so uh, that's why in valuing a business, uh, we need to know who are the people's uh, in the management uh, line. So the other uh, information that you need to know about the business that you going to value is product or services which is offered by the company what are what are the type of product or services which is uh, offered by the company so how does the the, the, the company operations look like what are their marketing or distribution strategy or, or, or approaches so basically this is the the main step that you need to uh, go through and uh, the type of information that you need to uh, gather before you can uh, value any company or any business. So first thing first, you need to know the background or, or history of the company. Then you, you have to uh, have some information about the economic data, economic outlook. Then you need to know about the industry's uh, competition how many com how many other companies are there in the same industry where is the uh, position of the company that are, uh, that you are going to value in the industry so uh, for the industry competition uh, you need to 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 do the uh, ratio analysis lah, uh, to where to know where is the company's uh, position uh, in the industry so how, or, or how does the uh, competition look like in the industry? So and then you need to know the nature of the business, the management, the product or services offered, the operation and marketing and uh, distribution. So what is involved in a business version is this continued. Then you need to know your, your financial analysis, trend and ratio analysis. So you need to know lah about the, the, the company's profit, the company's asset. That's why, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the first lecture, in order for you to do the, uh, the business relation, you need to recall back your memory, your knowledge on the uh, financial aspect of the company. Uh, you need to know the uh, very well of financial statements. So the, the, the type of financial statement you need to know is balance sheet, AKA, statement of financial position then the other type of uh, financial statement you need to know is income statement so you have to make sure that you should be able to understand what type of, of information is given by balance sheet aka statement of financial position and what type of information that you can get from income statement so as far as a business evaluation is concerned, so you you should be able to to understand lah the, the the whole uh, pictures of balance sheet and income statement. So uh, for instance, yeah, by looking at balance sheet, by looking at the total asset and the total liability and order equity, 
you should be able to know basically what is the condition or what is the 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 the, the company's uh, financial uh, position. So normally, if we look at the balance sheet and then we we notice that the amount or or the total of um, asset is higher than liability and owner equity, so it gives us some uh, early indications that the company is in a strong financial position. Because uh, if you still remember, uh, data from balance sheet can be used in order to uh, 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 analyze or in order to compute the quick ratio, the current ratio. So you need to recall back what is quick ratio, what is current ratio, what uh, does the quick and current uh, ratio try to tell us. So let's say your your quick ratio is three to one. That, what does it mean? Your current ratio is four to one. What does it mean? Between current ratio and quick ratio, which one will tell you a more accurate uh, data, which one is more uh, important. So you need to know all those uh, things before you can do uh, your, your business relation. That's why I, I urge you to uh, refer back to your previous notes on financial ratio analysis, which you have done, you have studied during your first year, first semester in accounting and financial management subject. So should you have lost or you have given the notes to your beloved junior and then uh, you you need to find it back lah from internet or, or or try to get back from your juniors so you, you need to have a copy to go through back because uh, if you look at the current cost info you will go through this financial ratio analysis uh, in two weeks if i'm not mistaken in week eight or nine, eight, nine, or nine, ten. So before you 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 will do the the topic again, maybe with uh, Doctor Zai. So better you do some uh, revision on the topic. Okay. So you need to uh, to to do some analysis on the trends and ratio. So, as I mentioned, like you need to, to do the, the, the financial ratio analysis. So you need to do ratio for the company and ratio for the industry. Normally, it is advised or it is advisable to do the analysis at least for three years. Sometimes we will do for the five years analysis to look at the trend of the company's performance. So it depends on when you value the companies. So sometimes, let's say, if you value the companies right after the economic recession, so you, you may need a longer period in the uh, as far as the financial ratio analysis is concerned. But if you are doing the valuation during the good time, so normally three years analysis should be enough. So if anybody asks you on how long should do the analysis, it depends on the economic conditions. Sometimes you may need to, to, to do a up to five years analysis. Sometimes or in, in most common uh, situation, three years should be enough, should be, should be sufficient. But don't stick to the three years answers. Like it, your, your your answer should be depends. If the economy is okay, stable, three years should be okay. But if it is a post or pre recession or financial crisis, you may need a longer period. Let's say five years. So so far okay. So far so good. Any 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 question? Anything to raise? No, kan? Hey guys, have you have your breakfast yet? You seem so very weak, though. Like you, you don't have energy to talk. No question. No question. Good. Let me have my uh, coffee first. Oh, very nice coffee. 
Okay. The next one you need to 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 know, you need to do some uh, analysis or study is you need to you need to do some forecasting about the future. Expectation for the future. What is the expected uh, future for the industry? What is the expected future for the company? Where does the company uh, heading to in the next five, ten years? So you need to to have some data on the future of the company because remember, sometimes we are valuing a business for acquisition purposes, meaning that any other parties are interested to buy the companies. So for acquisition purposes, normally the company, yes, they want to know about the, the past of the company, but what is more uh, attract them is the future of the company. Can the company generate more income for them if they buy or, or if they take over or, or if they merge with the company? How will the company futures looks like? Right? Like if you want, if you want to buy any company, surely you want to buy a company which has a bright future, right? No one to buy a company who's going to bankrupt in the next five years. Is it correct? Hey, you guys are for sure it's better though. Right, when I try right. to communicate with, with them, uh, any of them will, will, will answer me or they don't let me uh, talk to myself. So that, that's why I love first year more than you guys. But right, you, you should be more proactive than your junior because you have been in the industry for, for, for th three years now, okay? Okay, expectation of the future, eh, for the future, you need to to to, to do some study, um, some forecasting about the company's future. So you need to know lah, in order to, 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 to forecast for the future, what type of information you need. Uh, right. I think you have learned in some of your subject kan, on how to do uh, forecasting, right? Have you ever learn about the and in, in any subject how to forecast about the future normally for real estate you are forecasting about the future income like especially like commercial or office building or, or, or shopping mall right if you are using the the income approach or income methods normally you need to forecast for the future and then you you you, you will have the, the 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 past data so normally for for from the past data we will use the data to forecast for the future. That's why it, it, it is crucial for us to know the trend of the company's performance for the past three or five or 10 years. So in order for us to forecast for the future, you won't be able to forecast for your future without knowing your past performance, your past track record. So that's why in order for us to make a, a, a sound or a, a good uh, forecasting for the company, we need to know the past data and the future economic data. So sometimes what, what, what we forecast for, for the future, it doesn't have to be a correct or true 100%, right? Sometimes we were forecasting that in the next five years, the company will make uh, 5 million profit every year. But maybe uh, three years after that, uh, recession comes back and then the company does, doesn't make 5 million, only 1 million. But that one is none of our uh, fault or, or none of our business. As long as when you are doing the forecasting, the data that you use to forecast for the future is the reliable data. So they need, that's why you that's why you need to know about the economics in order for you to to forecast uh, uh, for your future. Uh, yeah. Betul. Betul. Okay. Uh. Ingatkan ada apa pertanyaan dia cakap betul je. Ikuan ni banyak makan nasi dagang pagi-pagi ni lemau. Selak nasi dagang tak ada pulut sikit, beras siam tu lemau jadinya. Kurangkan makan nasi dagang, Ikuan. 
Levels of values. Yang ini tadi. So this is level of values. So remember ya, since we are still in our second week of lecture, so the topic that we we going to do in the next sekarang baru slide six ada twenty seven slides lagi is more or less the 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 basic the background of the the business relation. So this is uh, the introduction of levels of values. So we start at the top part is the highest values. At the bottom part is the lowest value. So what is the highest value? The highest value will be acquisition value. Below acquisition value is stand alone value. Below that is market value. The most lowest value is illiquid value so what does the acquisition value means acquisition value is a value of a company in a purchase or sales of the entire company this includes the synergy value created by combining companies so that's why uh, if i'm not mistaken like in 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 our tutorial a question to i i did put some uh questions on different types of values so you guys need to know different type of values what is synergic value what is a uh, 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 fair market value fair value market value intrinsic value so you need to to know that you need to have some information about the definition of different types of values so stand alone of value, value of 100% interest in a company on a stand alone basis. What is a stand alone basis? Uh, we will go through later lah. So then the next one is market value. Market value is market value trading in a free and active market of minority interest that have no ability to control operations or of the company dividends paid to the shareholder market value like if you are talking about market value of a property or real estate is a, a bit a, a willing seller willing buyer adalah uh, uh, in a, a, a time frame yang reasonable time frame so same with a business relation so we we have to make sure that we should be able to define what is the market value for business valuation purposes what is the market value for normal real estate uh, valuation purposes so there might be some uh, a, a slightly difference in the definition uh, between business valuation uh, and real estate or property valuation or asset valuation as far as market value definition is concerned so the 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 the, the bottom one is illiquid value value of a minority shareholders in a private company the minority has no operating control no control of distributors and interests are not are not tradable on a free market so during your account again yeah, during your accounting and financial management uh, subject we have teach you on different type of business entities different type of companies so by right you should be able to recall but recall back what is a private company what is a public company because you may need to recall back the information when you are doing business valuation but sometimes you may uh, you may not know kan, what type of company that you are going to value. Maybe it is a, a, a sole proprietor or maybe it is a partnership or maybe it is a private limited, a public limited. So public limited with a, a limited uh, entity. There, there are a few types of, of, of uh, companies or business entities in Malaysia so you need to know every single type of the business entity that's the reason why we introduce you with the topic during your first year first semester so that's why I, I keep uh, 
telling you whatever you have learned during your first year first semester second semester second year first semester second semester you you cannot ignore them you may need to recall back for your future subject uh, especially like this subject lah uh, business ratio you need to recall back more on your accounting and financial management uh, subject more on your economic subject because in order for you to do forecasting you need to know the supply and demand the 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 the, the condition of the market that the company ventures in so you need to know all the basic principle basic things that you have learned in your first semester so same with the the, the valuation approaches basically all the approaches you have uh, learned or you have studied during your first and second years so what you are going to do now is just to recall back the concept the principle of those approaches or or, or, or methods uh, to make to make it uh, suitable for business relation because as i mentioned from the beginning business relation is 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 quite different because it involves tangible and intangible asset so we may be the expert of tangible asset i.e real estate blah 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 but for the intangible asset we still need to learn a lot from the other profession maybe uh, accountant or, or, or lawyers because uh, it seems that currently they are the one who are expert in this uh, intangible asset or properties like patent like copyright blah 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 goodwill so you need to work uh, hand with hand with them lah in order to 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 produce a good evaluation for the companies so this is the valuation process upon receiving the engagement letter you have to go through the engagement letter so the first step is define engagement so you need to to have a look what is your main task so normally in the uh, engage, engage engagement letter they will define what is your role what did the client expect you to do so if i'm not mistaken when i joined the business relation course uh, two years ago uh, i have been given example of engagement later maybe later lah, i need to find it back maybe i can just uh, show it to you how does the engagement letters looks like but during the call uh, during the course uh, the instructor has deleted the, the client's name because it is confidential so maybe before i can share it with you guys i need to have a look first and then I, maybe I need to uh, delete uh, the confidential information. So, but as far as you guys are concerned, uh, it is good enough if you have an idea how does the engagement letter looks like. And same with when, when we are doing uh, real estate or asset uh, valuation, we need the appointment letter, en engagement letter. But since we are not... Uh, being appointed as a staff that's why they they don't they don't call it appointment letter they call it engagement letter appointment normally is for for you guys to be appointed as a as a staff of any company so that's why then in term of the terminology lah language uh, used for for to differentiate different types of uh, letters lah so in in business relation we call it engagement letter eh? so you have to go through the engagement letter and then you need to define you need to find out what is your task in the business relation punya punya case too so uh, upon uh, going through the details of the engagement letter then later you you may decide whether to accept the case or to reject the case if you feel that you don't have the expertise to value the business maybe the, the 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 size of company is too big you are only in your one uh, in 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 your first or second year doing business valuation in the industry maybe you don't uh, you are not brave enough to take the case so maybe you can turn down the uh, appointment so that's when most of the company they will go through the engagement letter first if they feel that they are capable in 
uh, fulfilling the the client's uh, requirement, then they will accept the case. Otherwise, they will turn down or, or reject the case, and then the company, uh, the client will 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 have to appoint uh, any other company lah. Maybe which is a bigger company, more experienced company, as far as business relation is concerned. So after you uh, you have agreed to accept the engagement or appointment or, or to accept the case, then you need to start collecting data. What type of data that you need to collect? The data that we have discussed in our third or fourth slide just now. Now we are at our slide number seven, yeah, right? So just now, you need to find all this information and you need to do all this analysis. First thing first, you need to collect data. Lah. So by looking at this one, you you, you would know lah how, what type of data that you need to gather or you need to look for. So after you have collected the data, and then you are satisfied that the, the data is good enough, the data is sufficient for you guys to do or, or to start do the analysis process. So after collecting the data, you need to do the analysis part. Most of the business valuers out there, they find it, this is the most challenging part of the business valuation, analyzing the data. But some, some valuer, maybe they are uh, at the early stage of involving in business relations. Some of them may claim that data collection process is also quite challenging, very difficult. But it all depends on the size of company that you are going to value if it is a simple company then shouldn't be a problem lah you can do it uh, while chatting with your girlfriend or boyfriend but if it is a complicated data uh, you need to for to forget for a while your boyfriend girlfriend so you need to concentrate on the task in order to avoid any mistake uh, because remember as a valuer or, uh, if you uh, 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 make a, a wrong um, suggestion or, or you give the, the client a wrong uh, value, they can, they, they, they can take legal action against you. So you have to make sure that the data, the analysis that you have done with regards to the business relation is accurate and reasonable because some data you cannot uh, say the data is perfect but as long as the data is reasonable then and it is acceptable uh, by the market it should be okay so that's that's the the, the difficult part lah, uh, to ensure that the data is reasonable and accepted by the market so that's why it at the beginning i told you that in order for you guys to perform these duties as a business valuer, you need to have a, a number of years of experience in valuation works before you can join the business valuation industry. So if like we 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 perceive now business valuation is a, a new field new branch of uh, our business, uh, our valuation world. Previously, we just do uh, a properties, real estate, a tangible asset valuation. Now, as the uh, business will become more challenging, so we have the, this new branch of valuation process, which is business valuation. So after you have collected the data, and then you have done the analysis, and then you are, you are are already satisfied with the analysis then you can calculate you can start calculate the benefit stream then you need to after that you need to choose lah what type of approaches 
that you are going to use for this company. So either income approach, asset approach, market approach. So you 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 have to select the best approach. Normally, if you have alternative approaches, and then you select one of the approach, you need to justify why the approach that you choose is the best to value the company. So you need to stand by with your evidence, with your argument, with your uh, a reason as why this approach is the best for valuing the company that you are valuing for. So far, okay? Saya takut lah kalau kalau bila ngajar senyap, dia tambah kalau tak nampak muka, tak nampak apa yeah. ni semua di dunia masing-masing. Tanta on. You don't have to interview, let's say they have uh, six board of directors, members of board of directors. You don't need to, to interview all six of them. Somebody will take, you, you will interview the chairman and then uh, two other board members. Same with the management. Sometimes you just need to interview the CEO and CFO. Because uh, when we are talking about company, uh, we are more concerned about the financial matters. So that's why you need to uh, interview the chief financial officers or, or, or the general manager who are uh, responsible for the uh, accounting or the financial management of the company. So maybe you need to, 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 to have uh, uh, some insight from uh, major shareholders so normally, uh, as a shareholder, they will uh, 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 remain their investment in the company if the company is good. If the company is not good, they will shift their investment from this company to other to, to another company. That's why you need to to get the shareholders' uh, input on the the company's performance, the company's uh, yeah, the expectation on the on the company's uh, in the future. Same goes with the stakeholders. So that's all about data collecting process. So let's move to the analyze, uh, analyzing data process. So this is the step that you need to do. You need to go through uh, while you are analyzing the data. So you, you analyze the existing collected data. You identify the gap and potential adjustment. You identify the risk exposure. So you need to, to know eh, the specific risk which is associated with the type of company that you are valuing for. Review applicable and suitable methodology, methodology, analyze industry, financial ratio, business competitors, then you have to do the SWOT analysis. You need, you need to know what is the strength, what is the weaknesses of the company, what opportunities that the company has in the future, what is the threat, that the company need to face in the future. So normally, uh, SWOT analysis is the most crucial type of analysis for any type of businesses, regardless whether it is for business relation or even uh, it is for their own uh, management to plan ahead for the company. So normally, SWOT analysis is a compulsory for a company. You need to, to, to look at the strength of the company. How are going? How we are going to use the strength to overcome threat, to overcome weaknesses. How are we going to use our strength to grab opportunity? So the SWOT analysis normally will be analyzed using the metric uh, system, right? You analyze, you 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 list the, your strength, your 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 weaknesses. What is the opportunity that you will have in the future? What is the threat that? could seize the opportunity away from you. So this is very crucial. Lah. Uh, I think uh, when you study your uh, management principle, I'm not sure whether you have uh, studied management principle uh, during your early years, but uh, 2015 batch, I, 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 I teach them uh, management principles during their uh, PASUM uh, study. So I, I did teach them a management principle when they are doing their uh, pre-university courses.
yang 2015 punya batch lah yang who, who just graduated 2 years ago so in the manage, normally in the management principle subject uh, we will teach you the SWOT analysis how do the SWOT analysis what type of data that we need to collect to collect for strength weaknesses opportunity threats blah 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 so the next step is calculate the benefit stream the compare available data and and adjusted data identify identify ebit ebit done net cash flow Wait, you anybody knows what is ebit ebit is e earning b before i interest t tax is a bit a bit da never mind i will ask you what is a bit da in your tutorial i won't i won't give you everything just to make sure that you you is particularly particularly difficult by definition sole proprietorships are individual individually owned so attempting to find public information on prior sales of like businesses is not an easy task uh, dia, it, it give example lah the most difficult type of company or type of business establishment that you uh, won't be easy to get uh, 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 comparable is for sole proprietorship business Normally the company name will be Zol Trading or, 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 or Zol Real Estate Agent. So normally this type of company, if I pass away, the company is also pass away. It, it it is not transferable. The company will still exist as long as the owner, the founder, the creator still alive. Should the son or daughter or the kids decided to continue with the businesses, they can do so, but they have to re-register under their names. They cannot use the previous owner's name because once the previous owner passed away, the company, by definition, by by principle, is also has to be resolved. Tutup. But should the the the, the kids or son or daughter I decided to to continue with the business. Maybe the business is doing well. They can do so, but they have to re-register under their own names. The office, everything, the staff can 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 remain as before, but the the company's name will be changed to the new owner's name because it is a sole proprietorship. It is not like a partnership or or, or like a, a a a private or public limited company whereby if uh, any of the partners or the shareholders pass away or withdraw from the company, the company still go on using the same name because they 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 have they still have any other uh, partners or or or, or uh, shareholders. But as far as sole proprietorship is concerned, if the part if the owner, the sole owner of the company pass away or decided to uh, close down the businesses, the business then the company has also has to be resolved so it has to be closed down so if if somebody need or, or, or if somebody decided to take over they can take all the staff all the the business operation blah 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 but it has to be registered under new names so this is the the market approaches methods that you can use direct market data method merger and acquisition transactional data method guideline public company method so uh, this one we will go through lah later so but before we go through better if you have time maybe you can find some basic info uh, about these uh, three methods under the market approaches so that when we go through the the method you you already have some idea so easy for you guys to to decide whether you understand or not about the sing, every single method under uh, market approaches. So the next step, the step number eight is select the, be, the best approach. So 
not not necessarily a single method. Normally, we will use a uh, uh, two different methods as a cross check. Uh, same with same with when you are valuing a a, a special property or a, a complicated pro property right? right. Normally, you you don't do a single method. You will use at least two methods as a cross check method. Normally, only uh, with residential property, we will only use single method. Because residential property is very uh, straightforward case, but for hotel valuation, for petrol station valuation, for a golf course valuation, for a, a, a commercial property like shopping mall, office tower, normally we we don't uh, use single method or approach. We will use at least two methods as a cross check. To make sure that the value that we we suggested towards the end is a reasonable value, market value, which is acceptable by the market. So after you have select your best approach, you need to consider any discounts or premiums associated with the companies. So you need to go through lah. These adjustments are called valuation premiums and discounts, and they are multiplication factors of a valuation base value. The purpose is to reflect the characteristics differences between a subject equity interest to be valued and a benchmark used in valuation. So, subject equity interest is the subject company lah. So, benchmark ni normally is the 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 the, the comparison lah the comparable that you use. So sometimes we, we need to make uh, some adjustment on the uh, characteristics differences. So this is a quite a critical part to identify the char characteristic differences. So values of public entities or controlling interests are always higher than that of very similar or identical private entities or non-controlling interest. What does it mean? Later, later lah. Today we still have 13 slides to go within half an hour. So discounts and under discounts and premiums gain, they can be broadly classified into two levels, entity level and stakeholder levels. So that's why at the very beginning, you need to know who are your stakeholder, who are your shareholders. Kan? At the early part, tadi, just now we, we, we have discussed that uh, in, in data collecting process, you need to interview the stakeholder, the shareholder, the management of the company, the board of directors. So you need to, to find some information about the level of entity and stakeholder uh, for the company. So according to the application to the business as a whole or specific block of stock only. So this is more uh, related to public limited company or private limited company. It is nothing to do with uh, sole proprietorship or partnership. So uh, conglomerate company discount, customer concentration discount, discount for lack of marketability, environmentally, uh, environmental liability discount, investment company discount, key man discount, litigation liability discount. So what is all of this called? conglomerate company discount. So you need to know. So we will go through later. What is customer concentration discount? What is discount for lack of marketability? What's, uh, when does the, the lack of marketability uh, situation happen in the market? For what type of business it involves lack of marketability? So we need to gather all the information before we can come up into into conclusion about the value of the business some sometimes maybe some of you would ask kan, what is conglomerate company discount what is customer concentration discount how how does this uh, sort of a situation happen in the market for for certain type of business so we need to know we need to study so the commonly seen valuation premiums 
and discounts are key person discount discount for lack of marketability glob glob and discount for lack of control glob but this is the most common discount lah which is uh, involved as far as uh, business evaluation is concerned so since this, this is the most uh, uh, a common uh, discount of premiums associated with business evaluation so surely lah we will give more uh, attention to this type of premiums and discount key person discount so you we need to know what is what does it means by key person discount discount for lack of marketability when does this happen and discount for lack of control so we will go through later so a real life example is the resignation of steve jobs as a ceo of apple incorporation on august 24 2011 that lead that led to the stock price drop dropping more than 5% immediately thus a discount of the business value would appreciate if such management concentration occurs uh, uh, Steve Jobs ni is 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 uh, normally uh, associated with Apple incorporated right so once he he resigned from Apple of course uh, the investors trust the stakeholders confident on the firm or on the company has uh, somehow dropped so that's why we need to consider that sort of a situation when we are valuing apple incorporated okay. so we in, in in this example we shall give discount lah on the resignation of of uh, steve jobs ni because it will have impact on the company so the discount is more uh, to adjust the, the the company's value after steve jobs leave the company definitely lah of course it, it will have some impact but uh, how severe is the impact so the value the the valuator need to figure out and find out lah what is the how how severe the the impact on the company once he left the company reasons for control of premium uh, control confers value controlling party it is privately held company so this one is uh, we can skip for a while lah. and this one is a continuation of reasons for control premium uh, lack of discount control block uh, so this the, the this three four slightly they uh, explains in uh, quite details on what does it means by control premium what does it means by block discount of lack of control discount of lack of control again discount of lack of marketability uh, so this is a, a, a more interesting uh, and most of the cases it involve discount of lack of marketability block even when i join the business relation courses uh, a few courses on business relation uh, two years back uh, most of the instructor uh, or, or speakers uh, concentrate more um, explanation on DLOM discount of lack marketability as compared to DLOM and uh, premium that is the DLOM is discount on lack of uh, control uh, the other one is uh, control premium so uh, in 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 most of the 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 short courses on business version that i have attended uh, most of the instructor the speaker give more attention uh, more times in uh, explaining what does blog uh, what does blog mean and how severe is the blog uh, to the uh, company's value so uh, minority interest on a private company so as i mentioned lah, normally glom ni is, is is related to private company so um minority interest of private companies typically lack marketability a public traded share a publicly traded share is in the minority but it is marketable uh, why does it happen because for public
publicly traded company or a public company, the share is traded in the share market. But for private companies or private limited company, the share is can only be traded between the shareholders. They cannot sell the private company's share in the stock market. So that's why uh, in that sense, private limit, uh, private companies or private limited companies will have this uh, discount of lack of marketability because it couldn't be sell at share market. So meaning that a discount of lack, lack of marketability need is for a type of business which is difficult to find a new shareholder should any of the existing shareholder decide to withdraw from the companies. Faham tak? Understand? Boleh-boleh kan? It sounds tricky but it is actually straightforward. It is uh, related to private limited company. If you know the nature of the company, for the private limited company or private company, they are not allowed to sell their share in the publicly traded market. Publicly publicly traded market ni is bursa, bursa saham lah, the share market in Malaysia, bursa Malaysia. They are, they are not allowed because they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, the name of the company is private limited company. So they cannot sell the share in the company. But for, for public, it can easily sell the share in the share market. So that's why for normally for pub, public limited company, we don't have to discount for the lack of marketability. But for the private company, private limited company, we have to give some discount for the lack of marketability. So this is the, the, the example lah, example of the log and the log. Log is discount for lack of control, right? The log is lack of marketability. So C stands for control, M for marketability. The low is discount for lack of. The LO is discount lack of. So this, this one pun when we, we do the case study for this different type of relation, we will go through lah. What, uh, how, how severe is the impact on the uh, valuation. If you look at this a simple example for the log, it only uh, uh, deduct 10%, but for the long, 40%. Why the long is uh, higher than the log? Because if, if, if you couldn't sell your share, it will affect the company's capital. Because the, normally for private limited company, most of the capital is uh, uh, is uh, or, or, or injected by the uh, private shareholder. So if uh, let's say one of the shareholder pass away or the one of the shareholder uh, decide to withdraw for, for, from the company, so they need to find any other sh shareholder to maintain the 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 amount of capital in uh, in the company. So that's why you need to uh, consider to give some discount for the lack of marketability. Uh, for the private limited company, not public. Yeah, public can be traded publicly. So the 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 the, the process number ten is sanity checks. So you need to double check bottom up and top down checks before you 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 finalize your values. So you need to uh, look at your proof video uh, reviews by other clicks or certified partner. So once you have done the, the valuation, you need to uh, have a, a discussion lah ataupun show to your more senior uh, partners to to sort of verify either the, the value that you uh, come out with is uh, reasonable and acceptable or not. After you have discussed with your colleagues or certified partners or your seniors, then they, they, they do agree with your value then you can finalize the value and then complete the report to be submitted to the client. Uh, this one is uh, very straightforward and uh, even do by yourself. Data knowledge of the company asset. So this is the, the, the benefit. Uh, mostly if, if you look at the uh, um,
most of the stakeholders would like to know lah about the business. So by having business Malaysia ni, normally the 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 stakeholder, the investors, the uh, board of directors, the management will know the 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 a single detail of the company. Without the the business relation, mostly the financial uh, department staff would only know about the the the, the companies. But by having a business relation report ni, uh, every stakeholders shareholder will have access to know the 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 the, the real uh, situation about the companies. Understand the company resale value. Obtain a true company value, and then should the, the the company decided to merge or to be sell off to other company, so at least they know what is their value, how much money worth their company. Better during mergers and acquisition, acquisition, because some company during hard time they will have to merge with a bigger company to save the their their operation kan so especially during recession normally during recession a big big company if they find or, or if they see that there are a better opportunity in the future uh, with some other company they they will take an initiative to merge with the company or to acquire the company so this is the, the 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 benefits of having or knowing business relation lah. So it's like like your 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 parents or grand grandparents like if they know the value of your vacant land, and then if somebody uh, has interest to buy their land, at least they know how much their land worth from the market value uh, perspective. So at least they they would not be. Uh, cheated by the potential buyer so they know already okay my land worth 1 million so if somebody offer me uh, half a million don't accept if somebody offer me at least 900,000 uh, then we should consider because it, it's not that uh, far from the market value so that's how uh, the benefit of valuations ni will will, apa ni lah, will help the stakeholders by knowing the 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 value of our land or our business, so we we can uh, make a wise decision when we uh, decide to sell the company or, or or the land. If if you are talking about the land land lah, if you are talking about company company lah. When I say uh, by knowing the business valuation, we can attract more potential investors in the future because normally, as, as I mentioned, um, investors they will look for uh, a potentially company, a company which has a bright future. Because what if, if you look at the, the definition of investment is upper investment, the, the, the general uh, definition of investment is investing your money now with the hope of Return. producing income in the, in the future. Kan? Melepaskan sejumlah sejumla wang pada masa kini dengan harapan mendapat pulangan, mendapat keuntungan, mendapat apa lagi di masa hadapan. So you you invest your money now with the hope that you can generate more income, more money in the future. So that that's the basic definition of investment lah. That's why if the potential investors knows about your company, the potential of your company. After looking at your business valuation report, they might uh, be interested to pop, uh, to to invest their money in your company. So, your company might end up have uh, more capital by having new 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 investors. So that's how the public and private limited company uh, do in the market. Okay. In order to attract the, the the potential new investors, they need to have a fact and a figure so by having business relation ni they can show to the potential investor look this is uh, the value of our company for the next five years so if you are interested and if you have more money to be invested in our company you are most welcome we can start discuss about the uh, so that, that's, that's how uh, they, 
they they attract apa ni so that's all about today's lecture so we have uh, covered all the 33 slide if if you discover some of the slide i'm not uh, going through quite detail because we will do the the topic again uh, when we are doing the the topic in in more details in 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 the future weeks so that's why some of the slide i just go through uh, very fast right very quickly so don't worry we, we will go through uh, that one uh, a bit uh, detail when we are doing the, the the topic which is related to the uh, subtopic of later so because we are not, we're not going to spend more time doing the same thing uh, over and over again because you might get bored okay that's all for today. It is 10 to 11. So do you have any question to ask? This one very detailed. So, okay, young, okay. Because, because for, for today, I don't want to distract your, your opponent to, to, to go really because we haven't go uh, very details about each of the method yet, right? So you might yes, not uh, understand the, the, the whole opening. So even if I, I explain to you today, point, maybe you, you still do understand, but might as well we go through very details each of the approaches first, and then uh, we, we will uh, come across this no-so again, and then I'll explain to you what does no-so mean. Don't worry. A good question, a good uh, uh, concern, but later, eh? Okay, thank you, Sir Zul. Okay, you are most welcome. Boleh tak lain kali dalam dalam next class, you jangan cakap dulu, bagi orang lain cakap dulu. Kan tak nak dengar seluruh, asyik you je bertanya, bagi you seorang je dalam kelas ni. Kan, atau questions, I think you may, we, we, we may dismiss now. Uh, I'm sure that you have uh, another class after after this, right? Yes, 